Right. Welcome to Community Media. This is Eliza Jane. Today is Tuesday, June the 2nd. If you are watching this on another day, you are watching the rerun. To play along, go to crowd.live and enter in code 6ZQ5J. We have two special guests for you today. We have Dr. Christopher Rudisil, and he is the superintendent from the Conewago Valley School District. Christopher, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, good evening. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Chris Rudisil. I am superintendent of Conewago Valley as of January 1st, 2020. So fairly new to the position. Uh, lived in Adams County for 20 years now and married to my wife, uh, a former Gettysburg graduate, uh, Tiffany Bear. And um, we have two wonderful children, uh, Bryce and Bennett. So a little bit about me. Welcome to the show. You have a patience of the saint to work with kids. <laughs> <laughs> Our second guest is Representative uh, Dan Mao for the PA State 91st Legislative District. Hi, Dan. Hello, everyone. A um, little bit about me. I uh, was in contracting for a number of years, built up a, a pretty nice rental uh, business and uh, decided to get into politics uh, 14 years ago. And I'm the state rep and today's election day and uh, primary and uh, looks like uh, uh, I'm unopposed this year. So next couple years, hopefully uh, keep on doing a good job representing everyone. Sounds great. Thanks for joining the show. Thank you for having me. All right, we still have Brandon and Greg who are neck and neck. I think Ooh. Greg is in the lead and by one, possibly two, there's a big controversy with Greg having team name for one episode. So we'll see who um, is number one today. And while Bill is back for another round hey, today. Hey, hey. <laughs> Sorry I was gone. I've been stuck in the house trying to get my hair cut. Can't seem to get it cut. And uh, just want to say hi, and if y'all need some place to live, call Dan. He's got a lot of rentals out here. <laughs> that's, that's it for me. <laughs> All right, let's get playing trivia. We'll see if our first question is. We have seven seconds to go. Go to crowd.live and enter in code 6ZQ5J to play along. What 1994 sci-fi film spawned a TV series starring Richard Dean Anderson? MacGyver. <laughs> Alien Nation, <laughs> Stargate, 12 Monkeys, or Starship Troopers? Mm -hmm. Oh, MacGyver wasn't an option. MacGyver well, could I, fix some things, though. I hope to come in last place again this week <laughs> so I can keep my streak alive. Well, at least you can keep <laughs> some streak alive. 3% answered, 50% Stargate. All right, Greg is still in first place. Next round. What does the abbreviation PPP mean as it pertains to currency exchange? A, price, portion, percent. B, previously purchased price. C, price per partition, or D, purchasing power par uh, party. Third. There's too many P's. I'm getting tongue tied. Too, too many P's, and I don't have any pennies. <laughs> I don't have any pennies either. Sounds like a nursery rhyme. P -p 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 too many P's. And 43%. Greg's still in, in the lead. Brandon is catching up in second place. Bacon's in third. Denny's in fourth. Rep Mao is catching up in five. What bearded environmentalist, known as the father of the national parks, published over 300 articles, 12 books, and co-founded the Sierra Club? A, John Muir. B, Aldo Leopold. C, Chico Mendez. Or D, Edward Abbey. Seemed like this guy stayed busy, whoever he was. Well, I used to sleep in a park. You used to sleep in a park? <laughs> were, you, were you that productive? I was not productive. <laughs> you were not I productive. Who woke me up. One of these four guys woke me up by the tree. 
That was a lucky guess. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How many seasons of the original reboot 90s TV series Roseanne was there? A5, B7, C9, or D11? I didn't realize there were so many seasons with all these options. Or option E, one too many. <laughs> one too many. Well, that, that option should have been in there. And the answer is drum roll. Three answered, 43%. Let's see. I know I didn't watch Roseanne. <laughs> you didn't watch Roseanne. That wasn't a show I watched either. <laughs> Greg is still in the lead. Bacon hot on my tail. You don't assign him to murder cases. You just turn him loose is the tagline for what classic movie? A, Die Hard, B, Dirty Harry, C, Beverly Hills Cop, or D, RoboCop? Hmm. I was gonna suggest like Matlock or one of those. Oh, it says I, movie. That was my first thought. I don't know if That's we're showing movie. her age here or not. <laughs> that was my first thought. Dirty Harry's over in Matlock. Yeah, Perry Mason. <laughs> 100% answered, D Dirty Harry. Oh. You feeling lucky? <laughs> Always feeling lucky. Ooh. Greg's still in first. What 1982 film takes place primarily in a virtual computer world? A, Lawnmower Man, <laughs> B, Tron, C, The Matrix, or D, Johnny Nemec? I'm not sure if I said that right. Yeah. Certainly not the lawnmower man, I wouldn't think. What year was that? The lawnmower man. Like that was eighty something. Was it eighties? Eight, eighty-nine? Something like that. Yeah. That 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 was gonna be my guess, but I chose Is that a Stephen King film, The Lawnmower Man? It was a Stephen King book, yeah. The film didn't really follow the book at all. All right. Greg is still in the lead. Bacon is Right on the tail. In a written language, what refers to a written character that represents a word or phrase? Mm. A, phenom. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. B, nomogram. C, logogram. Or D, uh, detrim. Terminative. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I should have Greg read this question. <laughs> Well, darling, if you can't say it correctly, we are not going to get the answer right. Oh, just, just point, just point and click. Yeah. <laughs> just guess. Wow, nobody, nobody got it. Nobody got it because I couldn't say the, the words right. <laughs> <laughs> Even the smart people got it wrong. Lorio says, catching up. Who was the representative, Dan Mao's predecessor, of the 91st Legislative District of Pennsylvania. A, Raymond Gowker, B, Kenneth Moon, C, Steve Maitland, or D, Martin Cole? Hmm. Man, you've been in office for so long, man. <laughs> do you work with those guys? No. Greg, do you work with those guys? No. Or is it Dan? One of you guys are a politician. It's Dan. <laughs> that was your Get right. Well, Bill couldn't hear his hairs in his way. I can't see any of the answers. <laughs> what I is gotta the, fix my hair. What is the name of Metamorphosis' hover ship in the Matrix? Uh, I get all the words I can't read. A necro. I'm not sure what that one is. Nebuchadnezzar. Ne thank you. A. Greg, go ahead and read these for me. <laughs> Icarus, Osiris, or Rogue. Thank you. I only watched the first Matrix movie. I don't think they're real words anyway. And that's not Icarus. <laughs> they're not real words. Not real words. <laughs> <laughs> I think mean, that was a Byzantine king. Icarus was the one who flew too close to the sun. Eh, I don't know. Just give me the answer. What pill do you take, the green or the red? That's the question. <laughs> No, it's the blue. It's the blue. The blue. I don't even know the color of the pill. How far? Don't take, either. Don't take either. In what country are Lego building blocks invented? A, Denmark, B, Sweden, C, France, or D, Germany? 
Are you serious? I'm not kidding. I'm very serious. <laughs> I got it down to two. Does anybody at home really know? I knew this one. I don't know this one. I never even had Legos. I thought they were built here. Dude, yeah. so. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, I don't even know how I did this question. This will be a little lesson for me. I always got my brother's old Legos, so I thought mom built them. <laughs> <laughs> I always just step on them barefoot in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> that hurts. Which 90s TV series starred Paul Reiser and Helen Hunt as a married couple in New York City? Will and Grace. Mad About You, Everyone Loves Raymond, or Married with Children. Finally, I know, I know a trivia one. I know I've one. seen all of them but this show. <gasps> exactly. Process of elimination. <laughs> you got to ask more old people questions. More old people questions. Define old people questions. Um, uh, my, my and Dan's... <gasps> Yeah. Greg Weaver is still in first. Bacon is in second. CVSD Colonials is in third. Someone with, oh, I forget to say that. Thank you. Has a fear of what birthday party staple? Wrapping paper, cake, clowns, or candles? Glue. Glue. I always Wait. liked clowns. Hopefully no one's afraid of cake. Wedding cake. I'm afraid of wedding cake. Well, I can understand that. <laughs> Great, got it. <gasps> Survey says, 86% said clowns. Three. Clowns it is. I'm amazed at the number of people who are afraid of clowns. And Brandon's catching up in third place. Look out, Greg. I know. Siblings Carl, Dennis, and Brian were among the founding members of which band? The Almond Brothers, the Doobie Brothers, Hanson, or the Beach Boys? Hanson was that band of that chick, right? <laughs> I, think, I think they're all chicks in the Hanson band. There's more than one chick. They sing doo wop. Is that what it was called? Oo wop. Mbop. Something. Mbop, yeah. Mbop. Mbop. 71% said the Beach Boys. Really? Was that the right answer? That's the correct answer. Oh, man, I said answer. You guys were talking about the answer. <laughs> well, yeah, Bill, that was an old person question, Dan. <laughs> I, I could never go see him. It was against my parole. What comedy film by Mel Brooks spoofs the Star Wars franchise? Spaceballs, <laughs> Mars Attacks, Coneheads, or Blazing Saddles? Spaceballs was funny. Did any of you see Spaceballs? <laughs> yeah? Is that a hint? <laughs> it was too late. It was just a question. Sure. It wasn't a hint. Sure sounds like one. I didn't know Mel Gibson had the, the Spaceballs thing. Yeah. I didn't know the answer. You don't know the answers? No, I don't know the answers. Oh, we need a new host. That's it. <laughs> I quit. Greg's in the lead. Bacon is around in second. <laughs> Did I get any of these wrong by <laughs> What was the name yeah. of the comic book series where Superman first appeared? Thrilling Tales, Action Comics, Sensation Comics, Stories of Adventure. I actually know this one, and I'm not a comic book guy, but I know this one. But now, this, is, this is really interesting because I am a, a sci-fi geek, and I knew him as a DC comics. But I didn't know it was uh, before that. Hmm. So I took a shot. Yep. Wow. Hey, we all got it right. Action 100%. Comics. Number one, Superman throwing the car. Yeah, yeah he lived with <laughs> me. Yeah. Greg is in first place still. Glorioso is right behind him. How many continents does the equator cross? Two, three, four, or seven? Any guesses? I don't know. I don't know. I just can't get over that that, that Christopher looks like the rock. <laughs> <laughs> I, I keep waiting for him to go, can you smell what the rock is cooking, brother? 
<laughs> Maybe he'll quote that at the end. Yeah. <laughs> and no Wait. one got this right. That's not right. The equator didn't cross Australia. Or North America. I think it said countries, not continents. It's continents. I'm not sure. Which company yeah. produced the first commercially available compact disc player? Yeah. Philips, Pioneer, Sony, or Kenwood? Mm. Think about those compact disc players you had when you were a teen. Any of you are young enough. Well, assuming, assuming you had a walk with it, I'm not sure if that was the first, the first one. The first one came out in like 85 or something. Oh, the player. That's a compact disc itself. Oh, oh yeah, it doesn't say portable. Okay, I can say oh, it's it's a big giant one. And the answer was Sony. No, no. Greg is still in the lead. I still have my eight track. You still have your eight track. <laughs> right, Dan? <laughs> now you're now you're dating us. <laughs> the blue mesquite. Really hot a couple. The blue mesquite is a major tourist attraction in what world city? Istanbul, Jerusalem, Baghdad, or Cairo? I'm actually not sure. I've heard of it, but I'm not sure where it's at. Why are those rich ones bagged out of Cairo? If you travel, you might know this answer. Istanbul, not Constantinople? <laughs> I was waiting for someone to break down in song. Oh. Istanbul. Second and third place keep switching. How about last place? The same? Same. <laughs> what is the name of the Conewago Valley School District's <laughs> new career and technology facility? Now, if you get this one wrong. <laughs> <laughs> new Oxford Technology, Colonial Career and Technology Center, Oxford CTC, or the Oxford Center? I'm afraid to get it wrong. I don't honestly don't know. That's not my school district, man. <laughs> I guessed. Eighty-three percent. Uh, so that only means one person got it wrong. Hmm. One person got it wrong. Who that was? Well, Bill, was that you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the 2020 Summer Olympics was to take place in what city? Sukhoi, so South Korea, Tokyo, Japan, Hong Kong, China, or Sydney, Australia? Wasn't in Seoul. The Seoul just had them back in the. Uh, the yeah. Hmm. I'm not sure where it was supposed to take place, but some of those places already have had the Olympics. I know it if I hear it. Tokyo. give me the answer. 43% said Japan. All righty. How is it that I'm in sixth place? I got every question wrong. <laughs> <laughs> You're beating me. <laughs> you guys are neck and neck at uh, the, the bottom of the barrel there. How many, how many Earths could fit inside the sun? Three? 300? 1,300? Or 1. 1.3 million? I just Seriously, how, how do we know that? To fit them there. How do we know that? Someone knows it. That's why there's a trivia question. Yeah, if someone stayed up way too late and started making up questions. <laughs> Did anybody <laughs> see our answers besides us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of curious about that. People at home can actually see what we're answering. They, I don't think they can see your answers. They can see your score. Okay. <laughs> Who played Butch Cassidy? Paul Newman? Robert Redford? Timothy Scott? Or Cloris Leachman. Wow, Bill, this one's for you. Is this one on an older uh, question? Yeah, oh yeah. Dolly Parton. <laughs> or E, uh, Dolly Parton. <laughs> That's not an option. <laughs> <laughs> always an option in that in that era, Dolly Parton. It was always the right answer, no matter what the question. Dolly Parton's always an option. Did I get it right? Seven no. percent Paul Newman. Oh man. All right, Glorioso. <laughs> Greg and Glorioso neck and neck again. 
What famous record label did Barry Gordy Jr. start in 1959? Capitol Records, Atlanta Records, Motown Records, or Columbia Records? Come on, Danny boy, I'm trying to let you win. <laughs> I get them votes. I'm not a very good guesser. I like actually to get that votes, man. <laughs> Did you see the Temptations movie? It told you everything you needed to know. I bet I got this one right. All right, me too. I never saw the movie. Hundred percent right. Hundred <laughs> percent. All right, Danny. We're either all right or all wrong. One of the two. <laughs> Remember back in the day. Well done. Well, Bill, you're still in sixth. Woohoo! <laughs> what Stephen King novel features an evil clown named Pennywise? Misery, Mist, It, or The Stand? Cujo. I don't know it. Cujo. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't know it. So is, I don't know it. Make the questions have to do with phobia? Got to help my man Danny out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing up the rear, Bill. <laughs> hey, 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 save that for your campaign slogan. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone should get this one. Hey, someone didn't answer it. 14%. Not bad. The stand. All right. Just answering too slow. Yeah, if you answer slow, you get less points. What, Save that for your campaign slogan. <laughs> what is the U.S. state that borders one another? One other. Rhode yeah. Island, yeah. Maine, Washington, or Florida? I got that one. Maybe not. I don't, what? I don't even think I understand the question. What well, is the only U.S. State. state that borders one other? A oh, one other. Yes, one uh, other state. Yeah, I think it was actually Maine. I said Rhode Island like an idiot. Yep. I was thinking Vermont bordered. bordered. Uh, Vermont and Connecticut bordered Rhode Island. So yeah. it looks like Greg won. But it's okay because it's Also, Glorioso's in second. So Greg's still in the lead. Hercules, Hercules. All right, guys. So, Chris, let me get you to talk a little bit more about um, what your plans are as superintendent for the Conewago Valley School District. Sure. So, obviously, we, we ended school May 29th with uh, learning remotely due to the pandemic. And right now, our plan is we are gathering uh, staff, students, a few community members, and planning on what school will look like when we return in the fall uh, with students in school, right there, right? Correct, Representative Mao? Absolutely correct. <laughs> school will start on time this fall with students in seats and teachers in the front of the classroom. There we go. That, that is what we need. There is no doubt about it. Um, that's our plan, and that's what we're working on. We're hoping to have uh, a, a more detailed plan and final, I guess, uh, a start date and everything else ready for the community by July 1st at the latest. We're hoping to get information from the state either this week or next week, hopefully, fingers crossed, and uh, get that plan in place so that parents uh, can prepare for school next year and so can the students. Great. Yeah, I think the important part is for people to just be patient and allow you guys to be able to formulate a plan so that when the kids do go back to school, they can be safe and it can just be a well you know, driven plan. Yeah, we, we got to make sure we follow some of the CDC guidelines for sure. And just make sure that uh, we're doing what we can to make sure students are safe and healthy along with our staff. Yeah, absolutely. Dan, did you have anything else to add on that? Or what you guys are doing to kind of keep the public safe? Well, the governor really doesn't let us in on a whole lot. Uh, <laughs> he, he didn't come to the legislature and say, hey, guys, Let's work this out and see if we can come up with a plan. He went out, he, he went very rogue on this one. Um, and, you know, some things he did well, some things we think that he didn't do so well. Uh, but we're learning more and more every single day as to, uh, you know, how to defend against this, this virus. And what I'm learning and what, I, what I'm taking away from it is this is generally and don't take this the wrong way. This is generally an elderly person's nightmare 
but everyone else is not really that big a deal. My conclusion is that the media blew this thing so far out of proportion and scared the bejesus out of everybody thinking that there were going to be bodies laying in the street. And now that we know more, they couldn't have been more wrong. Uh, you know, simply take a look at some of our urban areas like New York. Um, you know, they, they cleared out hospitals for this. Right. And, um, you know, uh, it never materialized. They never put heads in beds. So, you know, my take on it is we've learned from it. Let's take what we've learned and move forward. But let's move forward in a safe way. It's like I just said to Chris. Yes, this fall, we need to get kids back in the classroom. There's no reason to not have them in the classroom. And uh, just follow some good, uh, you know, good procedures that are set forth by CDC and move on. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody that was like medically compromised certainly should be more aware and continue to protect themselves from the virus and everybody else should be more aware and protect themselves and be cautious. And we all should be doing those things like washing our hands and being more cautious of the spaces around us and it may be being socially distanced because we don't know what other what viruses people are carrying, but you're absolutely right. We I, should be more, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. We, we, we should be washing our hands anyway. Yeah. We <laughs> have a question for uh, Chris and Dan uh, on a serious note. Do you think the classrooms will be smaller than, uh, I mean, overcrowding was a thing before this pandemic. So do you think with the distancing and things like that, that the classrooms will be smaller and, and then need just to hire more teachers? I think you need to build a lot of buildings really quick in order to accommodate <laughs> that. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, we just don't have the classroom space. So uh, if you were to cut the classes in half, let's say, in order to, to give more space, where do you go with the other half that you just took out of the room? Yeah, I would agree. Un unfortunately, I mean, it's a good situation for Conewaga Valley. We're growing and our population keeps increasing with students. Uh, the bad thing is we are running out of space in our schools and classrooms. So eventually we'll have to probably do a demographic study, see what the next steps would be, would be for Conewaga Valley. And that might mean to build another school, add on to a school. The nice thing with, with our campus and our schools, while we maybe can't build out, we can always build up and add to them, so. Yeah, one other thing I'd like to throw in there is I think that, and, and probably I should add this little carrot on there is to my dismay, I think you're gonna see more uh, cyber school than you've seen in the past. I think there's gonna be a lot of parents saying, I'm not taking a chance, you're staying home and you're gonna do your school on a computer. And, and to, yeah. like a grandparent lives at home, that makes sense though. Yeah, and to that point, I know one of the things that we are working on this summer is, is trying to create some type of uh, online academy for our students that either A, don't feel safe to come back or might be uh, compromised with some type of uh, immunity deficiency, anything like that, that we can still offer them an education from Conewaga Valley and they can still interact with their peers and, and their teachers. Yeah, that's a better solution in homeschooling because some people are not qualified to teach their children. <laughs> and I speak from experience. I gotta say, guys, I am really impressed with the uh, way the school districts pulled uh, lesson plans and stuff just out of nowhere whenever this all hit. Yeah. I'm really impressed with our local uh, Northern York school district. So good job, guys. Way to, way to be under the gun. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> under the gun, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Well, thanks so much for everyone joining us for um, trivia. Does anyone have a message before we um, shut trivia down for the evening? You got 29 minutes. Get out there and vote. Go <laughs> oh, 29 minutes. Get out there and vote. Great message, Greg. Vote for Thank Dan. You. <laughs> vote, vote for me. <laughs> every Thank vote. So yeah, every vote counts. Yeah, thanks for joining. Yeah, Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. Anytime. Hope you guys had fun, and this is the end of trivia. Thanks for joining us for Community Media. Have a wonderful evening.